imagine they've been talking about the announcement of the Live 8 gig, which is uh, due to coincide with the G8 summit, isn't it, in July? You know, the G8 summit where the eight most powerful nations all get together in a room and go, everything's going great, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know what the ninth most powerful country is, but I bet they're livid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and they're, doing, they're doing a big... Uh, Bob Geldof's doing a big gig to draw attention to this, and he's been in some trouble with uh, encouraging school kids to take a, a day off school. Is he encouraging day. them to take Mondays off by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> he's called for a million people to march to Edinburgh. I mean, I think... You know, this is a country facing a massive obesity crisis. I mean, getting someone to march to their news agents <laughs> is <laughs> impossible enough. But most, the, most of the kids who bunk off go, yeah, I'm going to Edinburgh, and they won't. They're going out in the park and try and get a bottle of cider, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Put the hooded tops up and throw scaffold tubes at hearses. That's what they do. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Live 8 is up on our list. <laughs> yes. Okay. You're absolutely right. 48% of people were talking about Live Aid. It was a huge talking point this week. I don't know if you've seen the incredibly powerful commercial where a child dies every time famous people click their fingers. I couldn't help thinking, stop clicking your fingers. <laughs> Last night I went to a restaurant. I killed two kids just getting the bill. <laughs> it's been claimed this week that the Make Poverty History wristbands are made in China by children. Of course, they might not be children. They are a lot shorter over there. <laughs> My brother had the anti-racism uh, wristbands, which is, you know, the black one and the white one. The black one fell off, um, so now he's a racist. Uh... <laughs> Dave, over to you. What do you think people have been talking about this week? Big Brother um, is back. It's sort of indicative of, of, what, of the, the way the programme's going, that the second most important statistic they give you now when it comes on is the bus size. It's the breast size, isn't it? It's like Saskia, 34 double F. But they don't do it for... <laughs> they don't do it for the blokes, do they? They don't do Anthony, three and a half inches, on the slack. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen much of it because I've been quite busy this week counting my rice. But <laughs> the, the bits I've seen, I mean, you, you were talking there about the amount of large breasted ladies. I was watching under the sound down. It looked like Benny Hill made a rap video. <laughs> <laughs> it <was> fantastic. <laughs> well, let's have a look and see if Big Brother is on our list of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> it is. Big Brother was always. Let's face it, Big Brother was always going to be in our top five. Uh, they've introduced infrared cameras in the house. We're excited about the prospect of some nocturnal activity. Bill Oddie hopes to see a badger. <laughs> Sean, back over to you. What do you think the nation have been discussing this week? Well, the bumblebee crisis. What now? What? The bumblebee... <laughs> <laughs> Shit, my face. Don't panic! <laughs> Don't panic! No Calm one down. panic! Calm down, it's... What are you talking about? It's... <laughs> what bumblebee crisis? You don't know. No. In the paper when it says BB crisis, you know that's Big Brother, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Female bumblebees, which apparently are the, are the zealous, hard-working sex, are turning into fat, lazy males. Um, this is a crisis because although bees don't, bumblebees don't make honey, they do a lot of bumbling. And um, bumbling levels have reached a record low, and it is a, a real problem. <laughs> so what you're saying is there's a lot of lady bees turning into lady boys. Exactly. 